Are we on? We are on. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, today's April 10th, 2017, 6.30. This is a Development Governmental Relations uh, Subcommittee to Holyoke City Council. I'm the chairman. With me is uh, Councillor Mike Sullivan, Councillor Joe McGivern, Councillor Pete Tallman. Um, I think we're ready to go, so if I get a motion for number two, please. Who should receive item number two and take off the table? Sorry. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, item number two is a communication from the city treasurer uh, regarding section 2 349 of court ordinances. Um, a list of properties that she would like to see um, um, move to an auction. So we're going we're gonna to take that up, and, and by happenstance, we happen to have our city treasurer, uh, Sandy Smith, with us tonight. Welcome, Sandy. Um, okay, so you want to move that microphone towards yourself, okay? Turn it on. Move it down low so you, so you can speak directly into it. Uh, okay. we, we get a lot of complaints, Sandy, um, about people, counselors not speaking to their microphones. So if anybody's going to speak tonight, uh, the microphone is going to be right up to their up to their um, so, so, so mouth so, so people can hear you at home. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sandy, um, so tell us what's what's happening with with these uh, properties. What what's your plan, and and we'll uh, go from there. Thank you. Okay, good evening. Um, on the first sheet, you'll see a list of properties, and next to it is the assessed value and what we can do, what is on the property right now. For example, 20 Arthur Street and the Arthur Street, there's this little lot next to 20 Arthur Street, so we're hoping to sell it as one package. Um, and keep in mind that all of these properties, when we <coughs> do sell them at the auction, um, Sullivan and Sullivan are very good they don't pull any, you know, it's not a dog and pony show. It's the property is as is. So the owner comes with their deposit and gets a chance to look at the property before the auction and they buy it as is. Um, a perfect example of one of the sales in the second sheet, you'll see what we sold last year at our auction and we were able to take in 249330 that was our um, what was out there for bid. We actually took in one hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred. Um, one of the properties uh, I believe was um, Greenwood Avenue, two family house. I don't know if you're in if you drive by that area. The gentleman has done a beautiful job um, um, remodeling it and putting it back on the tax rolls. So I think our auctions are pretty good with the properties that we are given that we've had to foreclose on. So I just asked the committee to consider these properties for my next auction, which I'd like to do May 24th. And down at the middle, you'll see two properties that we just took over. I would like if you could consider those also. That was 506 Maple Street and 115 Newton Street. And the reason I'm asking about these two, I believe we have also another piece of property on um, Newton Street, 101 Newton Street and 115. It, they're both, to be honest with you, messes. But if we can get a developer in there to tear them down and rebuild, and that would be a nice area. Thank you. And then what's the other, the other three properties on here, Sandy? Why don't you tell us what those are? Oh, the three auction. properties that um, these did not go at our previous auction 47 <coughs> chapin street the person did bid on it then she had a family emergency so she backed out of it but we kept the five thousand dollar deposit so i'd like to put that back up for auction the, the, these three properties bray park drive main street chapin street yes okay they've already been approved by the city but i just wanted to let you know that they did not um they didn't sell or something happened that they had to get out of the um, so, so you're body. asking this this body to recommend to the city council, just so I'm clear, to recommend that these properties you have listed. And it looks like there's about are there 20, Sandy. How many are, are Roughly, there? Roughly, I believe. Okay. You you want us to vote to declare these surplus and that and that and recommend to city council and that you would have the city council uh, vote to declare them surplus. And then then if that if that were the case, if that vote happened, then you, the treasurer of the city, would uh, put these as part of a package to be auctioned on May 24th is that correct yes okay and uh, and I did <laughs> I did notice Sandy I don't know if you jumped the gun at all I, I did notice that the, the auction dates I saw some signs on, uh, on some yeah of the, um, the reason that <laughs> is happening I am going in for knee surgery on May um, not May 18th that would not be good April 18th so if I didn't put that into place 
by the time I get back from my surgery, we're now pushing into June, and I'd like to be able to say to the city council at the end of June, this is what we have, what we've sold, and that would help with our free cash. Okay, and just so I'm, I'm clear, you, you selected these properties, why? Because they're most marketable? Because why, why these? Um, we, again, I, I work with another group of, of department heads, and it's called the Problem Properties, which is Damien, um, the Law Office, Board of Health, Fire Department, trying to think of who's on the list but they before I even send this to the city council for a blessing I always send it to all the departments to say is this a good piece of property do we have <coughs> value in this property and can it be rehab um, Damien's very good at taking a look at these and saying yes I'm going to be honest with you Newton Street is 101 Newton Street and 115 Newton Street is a little bit of a hot mess but we figure if a developer is interested in tearing it down and rebuilding, it might be a good opportunity. And then how do we come about um, procuring Sullivan Sullivan? Oh, um, we went out to bid last year, and we have a, like a three-year contract with them. Oh, is that right? Okay, so yeah. the city went out, and where, where's Sullivan Sullivan? I see it's a 617 area code, and I have a, they have a website, but to tell me about them. Oh, off the top of my head, I can't tell you where oh, they're located, sorry. but they're very good at what they do. Um, previous auctions, we had Posnick, and to be honest with you, I really wasn't impressed with their sales pitch. Mm -hmm. This woman um, is excellent at what she does. She's honest. She tells the people that are bidding, you know, these are no, they're nothing that are beautiful, but you can make them, you know, worth something. So... Great. I do like the company. Okay, and, and Sullivan was the company used last year? Yes. All right. That's, uh, counselors have questions? Yep. Council Sullivan? Yeah. Uh, Cindy, is um, Damien mentioned to you about taking 33 Arthur off the list? Um, I've heard that they might be interested in using that for a project for Dean Tech. Um, to be honest with you, with Dean Tech, I have some concerns about liability, having students going to a pr off the school grounds. I'm checking with the law department. Um, I was checking with Sarah, but Sarah's left, so Amber's taken over. I just want to make sure that the students, when they leave the school grounds, that they are covered, and that if something happens, they're not suing the city. So I don't have a problem with offering properties to be fixed over by the students gives them a chance to learn and use their skills. My problem with Arthur Street is the roof is ready to cave in. If the law department said to me there's a you know there's no liability against the city of allowing these students leaving the grounds on their bucket list it would be like a year from now and to me if I can get that sold May tw May 24th I can have somebody in there remodeling and being able to move into it. I just want to stop the deterioration. Okay, so you think from what you've heard so far, it take them a year really, <coughs> really to put the program in play? Yeah, I would be willing to help Dean School, but my concern is the liability. Okay, and let's say uh, they were able to address that issue in the next 30 days. Would it be once it's turned over to Sullivan, someone would be able to take one off the list at the last moment? Or? I could do that if, if need be. I could take one off the list. Um, but right now, it, this, the list stands as is. I mean, it's subject to change. I could get a call from the fire department that says, you know, we just had an issue with one of the houses or buildings, and, you know, yep. it's not yep. safe to even try to sell. Or yeah, but it, up until... Yep, up until so the me, hour of the auction, yep, we could. Yep. yep, that's how good Sullivan and Sullivan are. They 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 work with me very well. Okay, thank you. Yep, Councilman McGivern. Andy, thank you. The you know assessed values are important, but they don't always tell the whole story. And on this list, which is good, but a little bit different than what we've seen in the past, there's six single-family homes, two two-family, and a couple apartment buildings. If there's value to any one of those properties. Do you have a minimum bid that you start with? Yes. 
Okay. Who determines the minimum bid? To be honest with you, Sullivan and Sullivan and myself in the law department, we kind of review before we start the auction and say this property, um, let's see what we can get for it. And if you look at last year's, we did pretty good on properties that we didn't think we were going to get that much money for. Um, right off the top of my head, I mean, um, 14 Center Street, we got $30,000 for that. And it's not, it wasn't in that great of a shape. And outside of being below a minimum bid or no bid, um, can you refuse, you know, bids that are not acceptable in terms yes. of, okay. Yes. And we, and just to make it perfectly clear, anybody that comes to the auction, they have to be in good standing. They cannot owe back taxes. They cannot um, have issues. They, they can't even have a, um, um, a ticket, you know, because we figured you got to be able to pay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for the list and thanks for the work you've done already bringing some money to the city with the other properties. Uh, this list here, this new list, now, does this um, list these homes and apartment blocks and vacant lots, have they been on with the city for a number of years or is it mostly just recent? Some of them have, and um, to be honest with you, and then there's the ones that are most recent. Um, I'm trying to think of the ones that have been out there for a while. Not many, maybe three. And if anything, they would be the vacant lots. Right. And people, when they, if they do bid on a lot, do they plan and just, I mean, do they actually do something with it? Do you follow up and after they yes. actually build? Do they yes. Park One of the lot? requirements is they have to give us a, a plan. When they, the day of the closing, they have to give us what they're planning on doing with the property. If they don't, we can take the property back. We've gotten that pretty well tight where, um, you know, they're not going to. When we had previous auctions, unfortunately, some of them fell through the cracks. But they purchased the building. They didn't remodel it or renovate it, but they're paying the taxes. And to me, I don't. I don't want that to happen ever again. So I've tightened up the, with legal, I've legal, tightened right. up the um, agreements, the, the buy-sell agreement. Right. Because it seems like, you know, like years past, if someone would just buy a lot and they would just sit there and I, they wouldn't right. do nothing with no. it. So. They have to tell us, they, I think they have three years to to um, fulfill their, their obligation to the city. And if we, you know, if we, Damien's very good and the Board of Health, if we don't see them doing it, then I give them a call and say, hey, what's going on? How come you haven't done this? You said you promised to do this in six months and you haven't done it. We follow up on follow it. Up and, and how often does this group meet, the, the group you said, the Board of Health? Damien. They meet once a month. Uh, my assistant, uh, Amy, goes and um, sits in on it and brings me back the information, puts it in Excel. And um, we're trying to um, take care of properties that have been abandoned or um, nobody wants them. So, right. And, and how do they come? I mean, how do they, how do these properties get to you? I mean, after a while, I mean, if someone's vacant, someone might just leave their home, right? And you don't um, know it's vacant for two, three months, and right. What it, what it, what happens is with the problem properties and. With the help of Sedell and Sedell, they will. Um, I will notify them. Problem properties will call. You know, Damien will call me and say, "Listen, I, I think we got a problem with one of these properties." We'll say Clemente St Street. I go, "Okay." So I call up Amy at Sedell and Sedell, and I said, "Can you follow through?" What what she does is because we don't have the staff or the time to do it. She goes and researches it, finds the person that owns the house. If it's if it's deceased and it's in a trust, then we go after that one. If we cannot get the payment of back taxes, then that's when I foreclose on it. Okay. And what, how long is that process about? Could it take up, up could to Could take a about years? 18 months. Uh, okay. You know, we've been trying to, to address the issues and work on them, and that's why I think the group Problem Properties is a very good group because, like I said, they meet once a month. They address the issues. Um, Alicia, who's a community development, you know, if she has some funds to tear down a prop piece of property, that is put in the, you know, in the meeting. Um, they make the decisions. Okay. Thank you. 
All set. Okay. Uh, just with us also, we're gonna. I want to recognize Harold Brunel, the former city solicitor, Councilor Jim Leahy, Councilor jo uh, Josie Valentin, uh, Councilor Valentin, recognized. Thank you. Um, thanks for for coming in, Sandy, and sharing this list. I actually emailed Amy today asking for this list, so I'm happy to see it. Um, very happy to see 229 Beach Street on here. It's been a problem property in Ward Four since I took office in yeah. January 2014. I've I probably have 30 emails to Damien and many others about it, so I'm happy to see it on this list, um, especially because right across 229 Beach is the parcel that we declared surplus and actually sold to what used to be Old Holyoke, uh, which is now One Holyoke CDC. They, <clears throat> excuse me, they built a beautiful two-family home there, so doing something with 229 Beach will definitely do uh, much good for that block. My question is regarding the assessed value. Um, does that include the back taxes, or at this point, this list does not include back taxes? No, it doesn't include back taxes. It just This came from the assessors, and rather than give you the cards to look through and everything else, I thought it would be easier um, to put that there just to show you that the property is assessed at X amount of dollars. If we sell it, like in the situation with um, um, Arthur Street, we, we're hoping to sell that as a package deal because the little piece of property that is next to this house, you, you can't do anything with it. It's on a slope. So um, when I talked to uh, Tony DeLude this morning, he said, yeah, let's sell it as a package, and then we will, once the, whoever the developer is or whoever wants the house, that house will get reassessed, and hopefully it'll be more, and it'll be more taxes. So my assumption was that the assessed value did not include the back taxes. Yes, so I was just, so the second part to that question is, do we have an idea just for information purposes on how, what's the total on back taxes between all these properties? Yeah, it's it's a lot, but I can send you the amount. I can have Amy just send for you. information yeah. to yeah. have an the idea. The unfortunate of... part is when we foreclose <clears throat> on something, a piece of property, you know, the city loses, and the only way we're going to get anything mm -hmm. is to to have an auction. Yeah. Um, we're never going to get back the money that you know the people walked away with not paying. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? For, uh, for the treasurer? Um, somebody want to make a motion to declare the surplus or not declare the surplus? Or Actually, I think the motion is to allow the treasurer to put these items on the auction list as she sees fit and present Thank it you. to us. We've already accepted these as taken for tax title, and we're just allowing her to move it to the next step. Second that motion. Okay. That works, <laughs> no, works for me. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate oh, you it. Want to vote on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approved. All right. Good luck. Okay. Okay. Next up, well, we don't see our next person, so why don't we move on to order and take, uh, I get a motion to take four and five, suspend the rules, take four and five up as a package. And then, uh, second, I get a second on second. that? Second. Okay, and then um, and then part of that motion be to open up a public hearing. Okay, so that that's the motion. Take four four and five up as a package. Spend the rules. Take four or five as a package and open up public hearing on on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, before us is uh, uh, special permit applications for uh, J and W Wally LLC for continued use of an auto repairs. Uh, and then special permit application for J and Wally LLC for continued continued use of auto sales. Um, if you're going to represent them, you, you got to get a microphone, right? Somebody want to just give uh, Councilor Brunel a hand? Okay. Okay. So we're going to we we are we are now in a, in a public hearing. Um, before us, we have the uh, uh, we have the applicants. Um, we have the applicants' attorney, uh, Harold Brunelt. Um Attorney Brault. Uh, this is, <clears throat> pardon me, my allergies are a little bit. This is property that was bought back in November of 2016. Uh, it's been a guest, it's been a repair station, auto repair, and a sales for as long as I can remember. Um, I have a picture of it here. With the, uh, with the thing. Uh, C 
since then, um, he's gone through the different hearings in the last four or five months since he's owned it. Um, and what they want to do is to uh, continue to do auto repairs and to do uh, car sales. Um, the owners of the property um, want to do the business in the LLC, and uh, it's been that type of business for a long time. The building on there <clears throat> has always been used as a repair garage and uh, and the lot next door. There's plenty of uh, land for the parking and uh, for everything else for showing the cars. <clears throat> it's a pretty good, substantial piece of property. Um, I'd like to ask my client, Jose. Set back. Right. Oh, there you go. Set back. Well, I wanted to have him testify what he's done since he's bought the property. I don't know where he went. He's coming. <coughs> Sorry. Jose, uh, you're Jose. Uh, Okay, hold, hold on. Just I'll let you introduce yourself. Just, just say, just speak into the microphone. Make sure it's working. Okay, my name is Josue Rivera. Okay, yeah, yeah just give, give me your name. Sorry again, just give me your name and address, and then we'll proceed okay. from there. Okay, Josue Rivera, 156 Oak Street. Okay. Mr. Rivera, um, why don't you tell us what's happening? Um, or Mr. Harold Brown, whatever. Can you explain what you've done so far in, in applying for the permit? And have you got the plans here? I got the plans. And I have my CDL uh, LLC, and so far I, I've been already uh, the inside. We painted it, uh, did a lot of fixing the floors and stuff like that, uh, like scraping the old wood because it was in a really bad shape. Extremely bad shape. How long have you on the property, uh, Mr. Rivera? Uh, this is uh, like five months already. Okay, you, you purchased this property five months ago? Yes. Okay. All right. drawn here. So you purchased, Mr. Vera, okay, so you purchased property five five months ago, um, and the thinking is to what you want to do? Um, I want to do a auto sales and an auto repair. Okay, and the auto repair is going to have how many bays? Uh, we we pushing to get four bays. Four bays, and then the, um, okay, your, your experience in that field is, is what? Well, uh, I did auto body for four years in thing. you done all, all great. So, great. so I did, I did mechanic, you know, oil change, brakes. Okay, and then um, it's not it's not gonna be nothing major. We're not gonna be doing stream repairs. We're just gonna be best, basic repairs like mufflers, uh, brakes, oil change, uh, inspection uh, station. If I'll be able to I get approved through Boston, that's we're looking forward for that to see if we could get it. And then tell me about the auto auto sales as well. Excuse me. You want to do you're 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 also applying for an auto sales yes. license. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, I usually buy I, I usually buy cars through Copar, through a friend of mine, and this this opportunity came up, and I would like just to be able to do it myself. Okay, uh, Attorney Brawl, you want to add to that? Um. Well, you, you, Harold, I, I'm going to just ask it again. You, you just, you just, you got to speak into the microphone. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm sorry. Sit, just pull it up to your, your chair. That's right. Okay. Let me, let me 
Uh, I'm sorry to be a pain, but th this is the, like the number one, well, not the number one, but it's one of the complaints we get. You, nobody can well, hear us at home. This was a property that Alan St. Martin used for years. At first it was him and his brother, and then Alan, and they sold it to him. But, of course, in Hoyuk you can't transfer the automobile sales license or the uh, repair licenses. Um, so you have to get the special permit. And so the whole intention of buying it was to sell cars and to do repairs. Uh, he's gone through and upgraded the property. He's built a complete plan. This plan has been submitted to all the city departments that was necessary, and I've gone over it. He's put a fence around it, and uh, and he's owned two or three other pieces of property in Hoyoke. He's always paid his taxes. He's always been, been on time. Um, he owns up on the White Street um, apartment house, and he and his brother uh, would make uh, good business people. Um, I've represented him for, for a number of years, and um, I find him to be reputable. Um, they need the special permits to to do business. That's all. No, I I, I get why they need why you're here. I I understand that part. Um, okay. Um, before I go to counselors, this is a public hearing. So, um, do, does any do any men that you, Mr. Vera, are you all set? Do you want to, do you want to add something? Good. You good? Okay. Yeah. Do any other do any members of the public want to address this? You don't have to either pro or con. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do is, is state your name. My name is address. Erskine Chafin. Again? Erskine Chafin. Yes, Mr. Okay, Mr. Chafin, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I drew the plans for him, an architect, and so... Uh, but what's I'm your address, Mr. Chafin? Pardon? Your address? It's uh, 121 Chestnut Street, Springfield. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Chafin. 01103. That, that's, that's okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm in favor of the project... Um, the building is structurally sound. He's done some work in there. And uh, there's going to be a fence around. There's going to be planting according to the uh, planning board. We had meetings with the planning board, and, and they seem to have uh, in favor of the project. So I think it should be going. You know, the building's sitting there doing nothing, and he's going to enhance the neighborhood and beautify it with beautiful plants, et cetera, et cetera. So, and he has all the parking spaces needed for the bays, he has all the parking spaces needed for the sales. He has all the parking spaces needed for the employees. And uh, he has a complete project, and I think you should approve it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes? Jane Papard, 277 Walnut Street, here in town. Um, my question, I have a couple of questions. How many cars is he going to put, quote unquote, on the lot uh, for sale? Yeah, could, could you just kind of, no, just kind of give me all your questions right now, and then we'll, and okay. I'll, I will, I'll, I'll okay. make sure they're addressed. And um, how many, he's talking about four bays, correct? That's, that's what his intention so is. So how many cars would he have hanging around getting repaired? The reason I'm asking this is that when um, the former owner ran that repair shop, it was a very low-key, very quiet place. There were a few cars uh, parked on uh, part of the lot. A lot of it wasn't used. And I would just be concerned if we had a lot of traffic in and out of that corner um, that it, it would really change the neighborhood. Thank you. Absolutely sure of the plan, um, Miss Papper. Yeah, we, we do we do have a we do have a plan here, so we can we can sort of lay it out. But Mr. Rivera, you want to address? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be 24 cars for sale, and uh, the la the the place when we bought it, the way that the uh, sportsman's auto sale used to run it, he just he was just used to sell it. He used to rent spaces to any given person, and the way that I noticed was the anybody could just rent uh, as, as a big chunk of space for fire or, or whichever cars. And for me, it was not a good idea because all these people trying to come to me to keep renting from me, I tell them no because 
a lot of those cars was just put there without tires, uh, dripping oil, you name it. You know, it was a hazard. So that's why I, I told everybody, no, I, I fenced it, and I'm going to run this in a legitimate way. The, it's going to be professional. Okay, just just tell me where, where's where's the where's the fencing going to be? The fence is is, is all around the premises. Well, not all around. I mean, you're going to have the fencing out out on Cabot Street, and fencing out on Elm Street, or where, where's the fence? Is that is that all your intention? You're going to surround the property with a fence? No, no, hold on. The fence is that's four foot high, and, and the planning uh, department, uh, you know, they. So where's the fence going to be? What's going to be on the property line? And no, then, I, I I understand that. And so there's there's it's a it's a square lot. Is the fence going to be around the whole lot? Is it going to be on the alley? Is it going to be on Cabot Street, Elm Street? Where's the see, where's the fence Elm going to be? Elm Street, and then then the property line between uh, that his property and, and the apartment next door is going to be there, and the, on Elm Street, and uh, it's going to be up uh, Cabot Street, and we have the uh, gates required. Uh, up to code gates, and um, there's going to be a five foot uh, planting buffer all around the property. And on, on uh, Cabot Street, there's no space to put a, a planting buffer, but he's going to uh, enhance the uh, tree belt there. And there's some trees there and grass there on Cabot Street. And then there's a big um, driveway right on the corner of Elm and Cabot which that's going to be uh, deleted, and the driveway is going to be moved over further down Elm Street. Okay, so uh, to so, alleviate so some there's of the traffic there. So the there's going to sound like there's going to be 24 cars for sale. So it's going to be a little, little bit fuller lot than what you're accustomed, and then um, and then it's uh, you have four bays, but your your re work re work probably is not going to require cars to be left on we, the we, lot too we, often. Is that? Oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. We're going to be taking light work. They most likely, if they're going to stay there, most likely will be the most one day. Okay, so you you would have the ability to store those inside the facility yeah, overnight we, if necessary? The, the, yeah. So you, you wouldn't leave them outside on the parking lot? Not, the, not the, for, the, for, for, for the tenants, no. For the for repairs. For repairs, they're going to be sitting inside. All right. Uh, and the previous owner used to have a 25 a car sale. I went with 24. Hey Jane, what, are there any other questions? You, do you want to do you want to follow up on that? No, that's fine. Um, what was it, um, I think the, the building, um, the planting of um, bushes or on the tree line would really uh, help that property. So just for the public, okay. Okay, so it's like it's like with a fence. We could have gone with a six feet high fence, but we decided to go with a four. Because we want it to look inviting, you know, we we don't want a fence so high they will look something like not normal. Yeah, that so, that makes a lot of sense, Mr. Well, Barry. Yeah, that makes neighborhood. sense. Yeah. yeah so you're you're not you're not really you just want to dress up the neighborhood a little bit. Um, um, okay, councilors have questions for anybody? Oh, well, before I do that, I'm strike that. Um, hold, hold on. Does any any other members of the public want to speak? I just want to ask something real quick. Okay. Oops, sorry. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> My name is Luis Rivera, <coughs> and I've been a uh, resident from Holyoke since whew, 35 years. Yeah, what's your address, Luis? 156 Oak Street. Okay, what's your comment, sir? Um, I just want to add to this to the whole come set of these plans. Uh, one of the good things that has come up on this plan is that we going and abiding by rules and regulations of the city of Holyoke. And we have done, you know, they asked for six feet. We, go, we went four, makes it more attractive, more better. But the, one of the concerns that we have in there was in the past, the drug use it. It was terrible in that corner because they had trees in there. It was terrible. People shooting drugs left and right. It was bad. And that's one of the concerns that she might have, having those cars in there for, for months and months. No, that's not the intention of this property. The intention is get the cars in, service them, and get them out. Beautiful fence, beautiful area, no more drugs, drugs uses in that area, which it makes the neighbors happy because they don't gonna have drug users in there throwing needles and doing things they're not supposed to be doing. The beautiful is the place is gonna be 
up to date and up to code and beautiful for the city for anybody to come and feel welcome. Thank you, Louis. Appreciate that. Thanks. Did you want to speak, sir? Oh, what? Did... Okay, well, why don't you just come up to the mic? It's just a general comment. Fences collect plastic bags, trash, and uh, I'd be more excited about planting uh, than I would um, a chain link fence such as is there now. When I walked in uh, this evening, uh, the trash that's collected in front of City Hall is really sad. Oh, it's an embarrassment. So. There's, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's a total embarrassment to, to, to anybody managing this building. There's no doubt about that. I saw it myself. It's, a, it's shameful. Sir? Ray Smalley, 10 Humston Slope, Holyoke. I'm the owner of the abutting property on Elm Street, uh, which is a residential apartment building, eight units. And uh, I'm concerned that we this property is kept clean and tidy. It's been a serious problem for our building in the past, not been kept up. Uh, the second issue that I have is uh, we have a serious problem getting the trash truck in and out of that property since the fence was put up. And I was uh, wondering if there was some way that we could get a small right away on the corner of that property. So, a uh, right away. Um, Yeah, well, I'll give you a chance one in a minute, not yet. Um, okay, so um, we've applied to the city for signs on the opposite side of the street so the truck can get in and out. However, that has not been granted. Okay, so, so Mr. Small, you, your building is where exactly? What, no, what's the address? 261 Elm Street. It's right beside this property on Elm Street. And, and how many units are in the building, Eight. sir? So it's a large dumpster. Takes a full, you know, um, trash truck has to make the turn, come into the driveway and pick up the dumpster. Okay, I don't know if we can resolve that here, but 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 but, but, I heard, but I'm going to recognize Council Valentin in a second. I, I know she's. Um, well, I have the answer to his question. That's why. Okay. Um, the term, I'm going to recognize Councillor Valentin first, okay? So, Councillor, if you want to go, go Thank ahead. Thank you. Um, so, just to let you know, um, basically, I was contacted by the company that does the recycling and the waste removal, and I filed an order um, because they were pretty much frustrated with the implementation of this fence that we're actually talking about right now. So that's what I wanted to make reference to. Um, I filed an order. We discussed it at our last full city council meeting. It was sent to ordinance. As we know, the queue for ordinance is extremely long. Um, so that order is already in the system. It is to remove some parking spots that are across the street from where this building is to facilitate the entrance and exit of the waste and recycling trucks. It's very similar to the order that we approved as a body on Linden Street, right after you pass uh, the intersection with Appleton. And that was also a request from the building owner there, Steve Boschko. We approved that at ordinance, and this is very similar to the wording of that one. So I am aware of the fence frustration that um, the folks in the apartment building have. And again, to answer the question uh, from the building owner, the order has been filed, but this is going to take a while. So. I guess, you know, I, I, this is all in my ward, and so I just wanted to give my two cents about this. Uh, this area uh, for this business is, if you all remember, um, I had filed an order uh, a while back regarding the um, terrible accident that happened where um, a woman was um, very seriously injured and folks from the garage actually came out to her rescue. Um, and we issued a proclamation to them for their bravery. Um, so that's the corner we're talking about. So in terms of the fence being there, I, I mean, I, I, I don't have such a huge issue, issue with the fence being there, but I do hear the concern from the building owner and the waste and, and recycling company. 
But I do echo uh, some of the things that Jane was speaking about. Jane lives literally parallel to this, um, to this location. And um, that corner is problematic in terms of, of trash. So I would hope that if the special permit is granted, which I hope it would be, I, I don't see a reason why not, um, that the owners really do make a compromise to the community in that area and that neighborhood um, to keep the area clean and to keep it um, moving forward. I appreciate that that um, he, uh, Mr. Rivera, has decided to discourage the people who used to rent spaces there. Um, I had never heard about that until I heard about this property where people are just renting space as if it was, you know, the, the parking lot at the Bradley Airport. Um, and so I, I appreciate that that's being discouraged so that the neighborhood can feel more at ease with the plan. But just wanted to give an update regarding um, all of those pieces. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Mr. Verde, uh, Attorney Brown, did you want to address this? Well, as far as the fencing, this was suggested by the development office and the people who he, he met with to put the fence up. Originally, he was going to put plantings, but they wanted the fence. So it was, it, the th fence. this was re recommended by the planning department and yep. the and the development office? Yeah. The fence was... was okay, is, is, a, is a fence up now? The fence up, and then the, okay. uh, it's still it's a, it's a work in progress. Mr. Barrett, just, you got to go to the mic, please. The fence is up already, and now the second stage is to get the approval for to start uh, putting a uh, new pavement and starting to put the, the trees, you know, the bushes to make it to the standard of the drawing. No, I, I appreciate that. I, it sounds to me like you're like you want to be a conscientious, good, good neighbor. That's 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 the impression I'm getting. Um, but um, you, you can hear some of the you know, you can hear some of the comments. Um, I can't really see how we're going to hear uh, address Mr. Smalley's concern. Well, Mr. Smalley's concern, uh, that, that, that issue would be addressed a long time ago, uh, the five months ago, because when I approached the property, the first thing that I, I contacted was his employers. They yeah. worked for him, and then he ended up contacting me, and I gave him the action to give me $50 for a good piece of ch uh, chunk of my land for, for every, every month to, to put the trash can where it was. But Mr. The, 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 the guy here, he decided to play low ball with me, only telling me $25 and a contract, I, I believe it was for how many years? Okay, all right. So, for so, five so, years. So, I, I don't mind getting to the negotiations right now. And but, then I, I so, went with a survey. <clears throat> I, I hear you on that. So, so I, you know, Mr. Smalley, I, 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 I hear your concern, um, and, and we certainly want to do what we can to, to be of assistance to you, but... Um, I mean, I, we have before us what we have before us, which is not really, you know, your issue. But if there was, I, I heard what the councilor said about you know, possibly, you know, creating an ordinance change. Um, so to me, maybe that'll help address it. But did, do you want to clarify something for me? Well, that there, I'm, yes, there was a proposal made to cut a piece out of the fence and put the uh, container at the edge so it wouldn't be disruptive. And then by the time I got back to Jose. He said, can't do it anymore. The architect has cast the fence, and that's that. Yeah. So we didn't even negotiate it. That was, that was when he saw the sans, uh, land severs, severs. Well, when well, he saw them measuring, well, a, 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 well, a day before he ended up calling me. Right, gentlemen. It was may, too late for that. Yeah, gentlemen, may, may, you know, may, maybe a small, you can, you can get in touch with Attorney Brault and Mr. Rivera for, for another thing. I, I mean, I, you know, they're reasonable people. I, I, I think they'll... You know, I, I think they'll probably find a middle ground somewhere on that. So, Count Sullivan? Yeah. Um, can you tell me what your intended hours of operation and how many days a week? Well, we, we, we plan to open it from Monday to Saturday from 8 to 5 in, in winter hours. and summer hours, we, we would like to keep it around 7.30 to 8, if that's possible. Wow. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, there aren't too many auto repair shops open up at eight, eight till eight o'clock in Holyoke. I, I can suggest that to you. So I, I, I'm not too psyched about that myself. Yeah. Okay. Just, just but, because of the, the dealer issue, I'm trying to be like the same hour as as a dealer. Probably, probably the repair shop will probably be closed, but due to the fact the the oh, sales cars. Okay. So so what you're what you're proposing is eight to five for um for for auto repair, and then maybe eight to seven 
for auto sales. Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, Sullivan, I'm sorry, go ahead. And closed on Sundays? Both the auto sales and the uh, well, I, I, I'm yeah. looking. I'm looking to have it closed just because that, that's uh, I'm a Catholic, and for now it is. If I, it, I don't see why should I have it open Sundays. Well, a, a lot, a lot are for sales. I mean, but that's yeah. that's um. So you, you're, again, so you're, you're happy Monday through Saturday. Again, this, this is my decision now. Yeah. In the near future, how everything goes, the, the you know the the inflation, whatever you know. If it pushed me to be able to have one more day open just to to be able to sustain the place, I probably would bring it up to the, my lawyer and to see how we go about it. But for right now, I, I seems, for me, it seems okay having it six days open. Okay. So that'll, that'll be... Uh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Councilor, well, Councilor McGivern. Harold, is this one lot or two lots? Mm -hmm. Um, it's all going to be used as. <coughs> I'm talking about property. We bought it all as one one parcel, but I think there's two. Um, I think there's two parcels, but it all came in one deed. The, the plan calls for using the whole thing as a unit. Okay. What what are the the two addresses? Description of the property is all one. I have one lot, Joe. Uh, one lot. Harold, before I say, it looks like we have one lot. It, uh, do we have two lots here? Is that what we're saying? I, I don't. See, I see one lot. No, sir. It just it just one lot. It's one lot. For water here, when I, I did the purchase, the 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 guy used to tell me that he a long time ago he used to have that. Used to park cars in that other lot, but then <coughs> he decided. Well, what, what do you call the other lot? <coughs> because I, I was, I was when when I approached him, I said, "Where do you used to have twenty five cars?" Because the the lot that you the unseen doesn't look like it. He said, "No, no, that that other lot it, it belongs to this lot. That's why I used to pull the car." But for some reason, he just he just looked towards another way, and, he, and that place just got so much dirt and debris and whatever, and that's why it looked like to. Two separate lots, it's one lot. but it's one lot. one lot. I'm trying to make it the way it used to be, one lot. Okay. Better. Yeah, more modern. It, it, more modern. Okay. Will the entire property be uh, be paved? Yes. By the time well, we you got open. two suggestions, we could either do the one already paved, leave it the way it is, and then put a gravel if it does allow. Uh, we still don't know yet if they, they're going to allow that or pay the whole entire lot. Or oh, it's going to be the, the right way. We're going to be putting drainage and, you know, it's going to be up to coal. Well, drainage is going to be an issue, and that's why I'm asking. Yeah, we're going to be doing those whole, uh, the artificial ones, they, they, they contain the whole water. And I already spoke to the water department, to the engineers, and they told me they, they even chafing Right, they said they, they could even agree to have yes. a backflow just in case. But the, the engineer, the, the lot should be paved completely. The lot will be paved. It should be, yeah. in, 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 rather than gravel, because then you need gas the basins and you need the uh, leaching yes. fields uh, to catch all the storm water, which has to be collected, and it can't roll into the street. So he's got to pave it and grade in. The land, so uh, Thank you. the drainage can be properly uh, acquired and collected. Hey, sir, while you're while you're standing there, um, I apologize, I lost your name, but this is is a wonderful map. You know, these plans that you presented for for us. Way, um, this is to scale for yep. the footage for what we're calling. Some people are saying one lot, and I'm saying two lots. It's one lot. One time, and I've been around for a long time, it was two lots. Trust me. Okay? But you're using the entire square footage of both of the one, both lots, whatever it is. Right, yes. Okay. I think it's um, 15, 12,000 square feet, something like that. It's I to think. scale, correct? It's to scale, yes, it is. One eighth okay. inch to a foot. So 13,000 
200 square feet. Let's say how many employees are you going to have? How many employees? Oh, five. How many parking spots do you have for employees? We got five. Where? Because there's, there's three. There, there's three they're noted on the plan there. there. Anybody can look at these plans. These uh, once you present them in a public hearing, there's two right there. Two employers, and then in this one, because this is another bay, you could fit three cars here. One of your operating bays, you're proposing to put your employees' cars there. Because there's, there's not right now. Right now, this is empty. The guy used to the the, the old man. They saw this. This was just not not usable. Okay. So we cleaned it, we painted it. So we're gonna have, we're gonna put brand new doors. We're gonna have two doors for the for all these eight cars here, and then one more door that's gonna be used for the employees. So three inside, two outside. Yeah, two outside. And, and customer parking. Over here, we got six of them and two handicap. Okay. And then we do we did a ramp here for the handicap people. And those way it looks like, but there's room. To egress the lot once you get in to go around oh, yes. and, and come out. And, and here's going to be the dumpster for the truck. And we're, we already called the waste management and they say it was a good fit for the truck to get in and, and come out. And we, we definitely going to have these arrow roofs. We're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to have a, a special person to mark for all the space. Thank you. Councilman? Thank you. Thank you, Oshua, uh, for coming down and showing this. Um, on, on the original building, um, you had two two bays. Yes. Right? Yes. How do you get the... F you get four now? No, because it, the, the, the whole thing... When Mike, I, Mike. When, we, when I purchased the pr property, he took me to the back. Right. And for some reason, he said he didn't have the the finance to be able to fix the back the back uh, garage. So when when I when I vision it, I took it. I say this is, a, is the the back the back is bigger than the front, and it was no use for it. So I say I, I saw potential. So would they be on the opposite side than where the front? So I mean you. But you could still go from the inside. Oh, you go on the inside. Yes, okay, so you got. So that one bay will have two room for two cars. The other bay will have room for two yeah, cars. Yeah, at one time I think it was the whole thing was open, but they ended up putting a wall, a brick wall, okay. to separate them. I don't know why they did that, but they did it. And in the grass area next door between the building lot now and the apartment building, that's all your property. Yes, just and that's going to be utilized for all these cars here. Yes, because it seems. I mean, on the picture I have is it's just a grass field with yes. some wooden, you know. And it wasn't. It wasn't that high either. You know, it used to be low, but for some reason, when you don't maintain it, dirt keeps keep piling. Right, and there's a fire hydrant still there on the sidewalk. Yes. So is that going to affect? No. Where you're coming in and out of? No. No. So you're you're coming in basically in the front where. You, yes. And then I'm you using, go to I'm the left. The, the, right now, I'm using the 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 existing driveway. Driveway. Yes. And you it had, it had four of them. I ended up closing one because it was kind of dangerous. It was in the corner of Elm. Okay, and the one on Cabot Street that was there, you're not going to utilize that for an entrance, except for the the two the two in the, cabin, in the back. The two in the cabin, they're going to be open. Okay. And then the one on Elm Street to the right, to the close to the Cabot Street, is going to be closed. Okay, but the one on the upper Cabot, where you said the truck is going to come in? Yes. For the dumpster. Is they, they, by they, by law we had to have a dumpster, so we we gonna we we I, before I end up doing the sketch, I end up calling the waste management. They told me you, that's a good idea because it's plenty of room for the truck to get in and out. For for the neighbors' concern, is that going to be oh, picked it, up at a certain time? Because they're right behind you, the Walnut Street, right? The house. Well, I could always I could always arrange the pickup time. That won't be no problem. Right. You know, if they don't want a truck at six in the morning, I would just tell them, hey, don't come at six in the morning. Yeah, because I know we've had people call yeah, picking no, no, up they, at 536 definitely, definitely, or something. I, I go, that, that's something to be easily arranged. And what do you have in the back of your building as far as buffer right now? Anything? Is there is there a wall there? Is a stone wall between you and Walnut Street, those back doors of the apartment buildings up there? 
or the it, houses? There's, there's a wall. So is there's an alley. An yeah, alley. An alley. So yeah, supposedly even when they did the survey, half of the alley supposedly belonged to that property. <laughs> but. Okay. Yeah, because I'm I just a little concerned about the neighbors behind, too, as long as, you know, because this is a lot different than what it was. And I, I'm glad you're doing this and cleaning it up, but it's a lot different than it, Being before. honest, it, it, so far, everything that I've been hearing from the neighbors, they, they're liking it, you know, they, at least they know some. I even show them the sketch they, they, for them to have an idea of it. And okay. And have you been doing any work yet? You Nothing, nothing in there yet? Just, no? just cleaning the, the cleaning whole thing. Cleaning up, yeah, fixing just, it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Joined by Councillor Nelson Roman. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, okay, and, uh, public, anybody else want to speak on this from the public? Councillor? Remark uh, based on what he just said. Councillor Valentin. Thank you. Um, I just, you know, that block of Walnut is uh, very, very vocal. Um, they're great neighbors and they're very, very invested into the neighborhood. So. I would hope that we can continue the open communication so that if there are concerns that come out during the process that um, obviously you know we don't have to come to the point where um, the, the project gets impacted so I'm happy to work with you all as also as the ward counselor um, in facilitating those conversations with the neighbors. And now that you sp they will speak right now if in the future if you have houses they need to get fixed to put payroll on your and Holyoke, let me see me. We got to do that. I already did four houses in Springfield. They was really in bad shape, and you guys look at them, pff, nice. So I'm, I'm, I'll do that too. So. The one is to invest in Holyoke. You know, that, that, that. One of the things that we do as a family, as brothers that we do, we want to really? make sure, we want to make sure that the city of Holyoke understands is that we as, as a team, because we are a team as a family, our goal is to get this type of properties in Holyoke that are being abandoned, for so many years, that they could have potential to be, you know, be brought back into the modern world, you know. But as long as we communicate among each other, we can make this a great a city, and that's what we want. And that's what one of the big projects you see in here, right in front of you, you know, it's a beautiful project. And once we finish with this one, we want to continue on, you know, and that's the goal because that lot right there. Empty is not doing nothing. You know, all those burnt buildings that were there in Cabot Street, that's all empty right there. You know, so who knows? That's potential for more things to come. So. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, uh, just along those lines, uh, you can, uh, there, there is a uh, pretty active receivership program, but in order to be a receiver, you have to be certified by the housing court. So you can have your lawyer uh, speak with our law department, and they can help, they can help you go through that you know, yeah, be, rec be recognized receiver, okay? No, okay, so you get a fine lawyer there. He'll he'll help you out with all that stuff, okay? Okay, um, so uh, we have us uh, before us a, uh, a a motion, but before we even go to a motion, we've got to see whether or not we want to keep this public hearing open or if we want to uh, make a motion to close this public hearing and, and deliberate. So what's your pleasure? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. On the motion to close the public hearing, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Public hearing is now closed. We will not take any more information. Uh, uh, do you want to make a motion so we can start the deliberation? I'm going to make a motion uh, to approve the special, recommend the special permit to the full city council with two restrictions, one uh, limiting it to 24 vehicles and the second limiting the operation of six, uh, Monday through Saturday, 7 to 7. Uh, I think it was Monday through Saturday, Councillor, 8 to 5 for repair and 8 to 7 for sales. I just suggested that so we don't get into winter, summer hours oh. and all of that as a reasonable compromise. Well, I we actually have two separate uh, items. And I yeah, there's two items. So separate them yeah, and do them each as a permit. I'd rather just have you amend that motion. Just, <coughs> just a, well, whatever, you can okay. do what you want. But, no. but, but repairs are... Well, we, we, took them as, we took them as a package, so we, we, can, we can vote on them as a package. But there's going to be two permits with different. With one of them is going to have a different type of gotcha. special condition. So I, I think it's easier to vote if, on. If, if that's the case, sure. Right. Well, one, that, 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 it that, sounds like one was going to be different hours. Yeah. And one requires certain things that the other one doesn't require. Okay. So if we were to amend that to the repairs being. Okay. So why don't we why don't we do it this way first? We'll just uh, we'll make it real real clean. We'll we'll do a motion to reconsider and we'll separate. We'll so just just take, just take a motion to reconsider our our action, 
um, and we'll, we'll take them up separately. Is that okay? Motion to reconsider our action. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so uh, now, we'll, we'll, so if we just get a motion to take, take up, up item number four. Second. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. agenda item four is, um, where's my, thank you. Agenda item four is um, for the auto repairs. Uh, so auto repairs, um, so Council Levin, you want to make your motion again? Okay, I'll give it a try. Um, approve with conditions? Yeah, approved conditions um, now on the 24 vehicles. That's combined usage that it doesn't exceed that for repairs and. That's right. You can, you can make that part yeah, and then the hours. Okay. And then for repairs, um, I believe the hours there requested were 8 to 5. That's right. Could we make it 530? No. Well, I mean, maybe we can. Why, well, Harold? Why? 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 We, why are you making well, five thirty? Because sometimes you you have an emergency, which you, which you're waiting for a part. You know, I had situation in Hoyoke where they said five o'clock, and the cop was there at five five o'clock, and sure. they had to lock up in the woman's car. Got locked in for the night. You want to amend that? Okay, eight to five thirty. All right. Yeah. All right, and that'll be. Six days a week, Monday through Saturday. Right, I'll second that. So under discussion, uh, for so the, the motions, um, the, the motion is to uh, uh, grant grant a special permit for the auto repair license, with the with the conditions set forth in the planning board recommendation, with the uh, with the conditions to, um, and that that includes the 24 spaces. So that's in the, the planning board recommendations. Include the 24, you know, cap at 24 um, spaces, and have the hours 8 to 5:30, Monday no. through Saturday. Repair is only four bays, and they need eight spaces. Right, but but the, the total number of spaces uh, counts. The, the 24, twenty-four is going to be for the for the next permit. The, the twenty-four is for both of them, Councillor. There isn't a repair you, you, shop in Holyoke that has twenty-four spaces for repair cars. Because you. Right. The, the the total was the to, total twenty four space. But we we got to separate. I I hear your point. Okay. So the 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 uh, eight base spaces. Um, so basically, that that's the recommendation put forth in the uh, uh, planning department's uh, letter. If I can get it in front of me, that would be helpful. Which says minimum number of spaces. Um, you need seven. Or actually, maximum number says is seven. Okay, so but you, you're saying you're saying eight. Well, the the plan is providing for eight. I mean, there can be flexibility there if they, but as long as they meet the max as needed. I always want two per bay. Right. But you can play with the spaces in the bay. Well. Here's the planning board says four spaces are required for each service bay. Um, therefore, 16 exterior parking spaces are required. We don't have the planning board here, Mr. Chairman, and you know this becomes a problem every time we do this. Well. Um, Required spaces, adequate parking spaces, um, let's see, according to formula for the ordinance code, four spaces are required for each service bay. Based on the information submitted by the applicant, four service bays are proposed. Therefore, 16 exterior parking spaces are required. So, and then, so you, you would need 16 exterior parking spaces per service bay. I don't know, but my recollection was, was, was two parking spaces. I, I, this is... This is um, definitely yeah. There's there are 16 spaces, but 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 he's also got also got the auto sales on on here as well. There, there's 24 spaces for sales. Yep. And there's eight spaces for repair, so. and there's two outdoor spaces for employees on this plan, and then there's six spaces for customers. There's no 16 spaces for repair. The 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 city. <coughs> the city is requesting to have four four bay, four parking space for each bay, 
for me, it seemed kind of absurd too. So, so, so we yeah, did. A, we, yeah, Mr. Vera. Yeah, I'm sorry, but we're, we're I, we'll, we'll we'll sort it out. So I, I'm I'm gonna. I, 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 the recommendation from the planning board on that one, we're, we're, I mean, I, I think we should ignore it. Um, I think it should be two spaces per, per bay. That, that'll be a total of eight spaces for the repair, and that would give them the adequate park, adequate number of spaces for his auto sales. So, I mean, to me, that's a, that's a reasonable compromise. Does anyone want to make an argument about that? No, or? that's no? fine. Okay, okay. You, you can also count the bay as a parking space. Absolutely, count. If you can fit two cars in okay. the bay, you can count so, the two cars in the bay. Okay, so we, we here we are. We've got we're, we're gonna we're gonna the motion on the floor. We we've got the hours for repairs: eight to five thirty, Monday through Saturday. So we got that covered. Um, we've got two parking spaces per bay for eight total eight total parking spaces for for the repairs. Um, other and that is at six point oh boy six b that looks now six a so we're going to ignore that part but otherwise we're going to accept the planning board's uh, recommendations as delineated in its letter of uh, March second uh, okay so that's the motion before us any other discussion hearing none all in favor aye, aye. okay the can I get another motion to take up number uh, five, please? Second. All in favor, take up number five. Uh, Aye. Okay, item five is special permit application for continued use of auto sales. Uh, if I could get a if I could get a motion for um, for that, please. You want to make a motion to grant a special permit? The hours motion to grant a special permit with conditions, the hours eight to seven, Monday through Saturday. Second. Okay. Um, on that on that motion, we're we're going to amend it to to make sure that the uh, recommendations from the planning board from the letter dated uh, three two seventeen are included. Uh, that's my motion. Twenty four spaces. It's twenty four spaces, Councilor. Twenty four spaces. Okay. So, Chairman, can we also include the just address the employee parking that the two outdoor spaces remain for employees and the indoor spaces are are fine as if they're. Uh, if no one objects, I think they're fine. And the customer spaces are for both permits, but they're adequate. I'm just trying to read if that's addressed in the letter here. That would have been helpful if it were. Um, but I don't see it clear. So, so for sales, uh, two employee so it's just just some employee parking again, Council. You want to just repeat that? Uh, two outdoor employee parking, three indoor, and six cust six customer. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay, so the motion is to approve the special permit to add a condition for hours Monday through Saturday, eight to seven, um, to ensure that there are twenty four parking spaces. But that is addressed in the March second letter to ensure that there are two outdoor parking spaces three indoor parking spaces for employees and to ensure that there are six customer parking spaces did i miss anything i don't think i did um counselor one more um condition i want to word it the correct way but I heard there's some discussion about it but the the parking lot itself needs to be paved addressed um I, I like to say paved address according to the uh, what's what's um, allowable or, or acceptable to the uh, to the building planning department. Um, the planning department is going to dictate the drainage and everything that has to be done. Um, if this what I call the second lot, the inner lot, isn't taken care of, it's going to continue to be a problem, whether it's gravel or dirt or however it goes. It needs, you know, it needs to be addressed in a more permanent. Well, um, I, I mean, I think that's really the purview of the Board of Public Works and the Stormwater Authority, is it not, to to address the uh, the, the paving and repaving issues? Well, right now, I believe it's dirt. Uh, I 
think I heard the applicant say he's going to have a gravel lot, and we've approved others with gravel lots. I mean, so you you want to you want to put a condition on this that it's that it's resurfaced, resurfaced, accepted by the planning building departments. I mean that's. I, I mean, I, I guess you could make that that motion. I, I mean, I, I would just. I would only say that that's a fairly expensive proposition, um, and then and the time timing on that would be what? You know, for the day they open for six months, uh, what would what would your what would your pleasure be? Uh, that's a fairly time-consuming, expensive proposition. It's a beautiful neighborhood with a lot of great residential people and property next to it. Well, it sounds like he's going to put up a lot of uh, buffering and, and clean out the back lot, and uh, but a dirt lot cannot be kept clean. Well, I think he says he's going to make it a gravel lot. That that's that's well, that's that's, that's if the building department accepts the gravel, I'm fine with that. The, but something has to be done. Can't be, can't remain a dirt lot. It needs to be addressed. Okay. Well, all right. That's a fair comp. Okay. So the 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 recommendation would be what to. Um, to, to find some kind of a surface that would, and I think he hit sort of gravel, to find some kind of a surface that would be more permanent than a dirt lot. I mean, to, to, to say that he has to resurface it with, with asphalt, uh, when, when I know darn well we, we've done that this with, with other lots, where we just had, you know, gravel's okay, um, I mean, that's pretty onerous. I, I hear you, it's a nice neighborhood. You're, you are, it's a lovely neighborhood. Um, So I mean, would you be? Well, I mean, what, what's, what's your motion? That a service acceptable to the planning department, building department, be be put in place. That that's it. You know, we can leave it up to them. Okay. As long as it's not going to be a dirt lot. Okay. So that, that that's an amendment. Uh, that that seconded, Council. You want to second that? Second. Okay. On, on that amendment, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So a uh, permanent or uh, a, 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 a surface acceptable to Planning Board and uh, Board of Public Works, uh, Stormwater Authority. Um, be uh, be approved. Okay, gentlemen. All right, you 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 understand what we just did, Councillor? I mean, I'm I'm not. I'm, I, it's a rhetorical question. I'm, asking, <coughs> I'm, I'm not asking to answer. That's but acceptable. okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, okay, plan, plan all right. Okay, on the motion with uh, the various amendments, unless there are other amendments. Okay, hearing none, on the motion, uh, as, uh, as amended, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, gentlemen, okay, so what we did was we uh, approved both your special permits as a recommendation to the full city council. And the full city council will meet, um, when do we meet? Next week, a week from tomorrow. And so we'll, we'll take a vote then, Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, let's go back to regular order. If I could get a motion, take up number three. That'd be wonderful. Thank you, guys. Second. Uh, all in favor, take up agenda item number three. Aye. Okay. Uh, that the Honorable Holyoke City Council invite Holyoke CC President uh, Christina Royale, a uh, Royal, I should say. I don't want to pronounce like that. Christina Royal into the uh, committee. And so we have with us HCC President. And, and special, Jeff, are you coming in or are you staying out? Okay, okay. All right. And President, why don't you just take a seat right next to um, one of your top employees, and, and she'll, she'll make sure you, you're, you're all mic'd up. You're all mic'd up. Gentlemen, thank you. Attorney Brawl, thank you. Okay, I, I'm sure the viewers, are, the viewers are loving that, Harold. Harold, turn up the microphone. Boy, they must love that with the sound turned up to 400. Whoop. Right, right below it. Oh, you're the best. Who said you can't teach an old dog new tricks? You're great. <laughs> well, for this place, that would be brand new. You're correct, sir. <laughs> uh, well, welcome. President Roy Royal, th th thank you. Thank you. Yes. Would you allow me to go there by oh. putting a railing in your uh, auditorium? 
I can walk down the stairs. I already sent an email to Bill Post. There you go. And it's a dangerous. <laughs> okay. Good evening. <laughs> Okay, so so this is great. We had Councillor Leahy file this wonderful order, and um, so to, to have you come in. So this is we we changed this committee uh, a few years ago um, to for this very purpose, so we could just hear more, have more people from their stakeholders in the city come to City Hall. We could hear from them. So since since we changed the committee makeup uh, four years ago, we've just had some wonderful interaction with. Uh, Either public officials or people that are interested in Holyoke, and it's just been it's been really great. So uh, you're you're following in a in a great great um, line. So uh, President Royal, um, welcome. We, we look forward to hearing from you. Um, and so uh, why don't you why don't you tell us what what you what you can? Great. Well, thank you very much for the invitation to. Um, given that I am new to the community and the state as well as the college. Uh, this is a great opportunity to get a chance to know other uh, city officials in, in the local community. So I appreciate that opportunity. Um, I started in January, so um, this is three months on the job. Um, <laughs> but um, I really, really have enjoyed just even starting to get to know Holyoke and the surrounding communities, um, understand the college internally and as well as the external partnerships. One of the things that really attracted me to this position was the relationship that the college had with the community. Um, you, you see in some parts of the nation a trend towards removing community from the name of two-year schools. And so um, I was really fortunate that Holyoke Community College had a good reputation in the community and, and uh, sees itself as a partner in that, in that local area. So I just wanted to share a little bit about um, a process that we're going to be embarking on that I certainly welcome uh, your participation as well as others in the community. When I first came in, I started asking about understanding what some of our priorities were and what our strategic plan was. And we've got college priorities that um, have been clearly delineated and are very much in alignment with the um, Department of uh, Higher Education's vision project, but I felt that there was a piece missing that really has to do with the locality of what makes HCC different and what are we specifically looking to do in this community um, with the population of students that we have coming into the college and that we want to attract. And so we're going to be embarking on a strategic planning process in the next academic year. Um, this semester, we're doing we're using this as a, a pre-planning semester, and uh, we'll kick this off in um, officially in August. And one of the things that I would really want to have be a part of this process is good engagement from the community in understanding how the community sees HCC's role in the community as well as other partnership opportunities that may exist. Um, I have a belief in general in terms of my philosophy of community college education that it takes a village to raise a student and that focusing solely on academic is not going to be enough to get them across the finish line to successfully complete but it also means that you know we view each other as partners in the community and recognize that we have to work together to solve the community's problems. So we happen to have uh, a significant number of folks that are low income. We have changing demographics that are also um, apparent in our local community. We have um, homelessness. We have uh, folks struggling with health care issues. And as a, a provider of education, we can't just look at um, what their degree plan is and, and what they want to study. We have to really look at the whole person. And so that's a, that's a really important piece when I think about how we're serving the community and the student as well. So in the strategic planning process, um, I'm really looking for a space to allow the community members to help also identify what they think is HCC's future. And um, the plan that we're going to create is 
going to be a three-year plan. I think that's about as far out as you can plan in, in higher education, given the number of external variables outside of our control. And um, this will uh, this this will be the basis of our our more immediate future. So, I welcome you to participate in that process. <clears throat> when you think of uh, general priorities for uh, higher education, and me specifically coming into this position, um, there's I have three primary priorities when I think of of students. Um, one is success that that we're that we students are coming to us with an idea of how they can change their lives through education and that we're able to help them do that successfully. The next is affordability and making sure that education remains a feasible option for most people. And that means that not having finances be a barrier to them pursuing uh, additional education or retraining if perhaps they lost their job or desire career change. And then the third is equity and um, making sure that the college reflects the community and also that we ensure that all students, regardless of their backgrounds, have the same chance for success. So at a high level, uh, those are some of the things that I'm focused on coming in to the college and the community. And um, uh, I would welcome any questions that you might have for me. Okay, great. Councilors, want to Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you uh, so much for coming in. Um, I had filed this order. I'm uh, city councilor in Hoyoke here, obviously, uh, but I'm also uh, the president of the Westwood State University Foundation. And so we, too, uh, up there have a new president, uh, Dr. Torcia, and I've been working extremely close with him um, on some actually very similar initiatives. Um, uh, so I'm not sure if that's like a mandate coming down from the state or whatnot, but it's uh, some of the language you're using, the same, same language that he's used with me as well, um, you know, the equity and the affordability, and, was, and most importantly, I think, is the student success. Um, uh, I, I just want to know some of your plans for your vision on... Um, uh, you know, partnership or getting uh, children, like children, they're young adults, um, into like the four-year programs. I'm not sure the percentage now of people that stop at a two-year pro program, then, um, you know, some of them go on, some of them go in military. Um, what is that percentage? Do you know? I'm just ballpark. I'm not holding it anything. I actually, I don't know the percentage, but I can tell you that um, HCC has a very good reputation for transfer, yeah. and that is something that is um, it's it's palatable through the institution um, that we don't look at ourselves as a final destination for students, but rather that this is a pit stop along their lifelong journey. I should also I'll tell you too that I, I am also a graduate alumni. Um, DJ up there, 103.5, very fine, instant college writer. Uh, also, <laughs> I'm a student senator, a former student senator. And years after that, uh, my first uh, software, uh, or my first sales job, uh, I was one of the guys that sold Plato Learning. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys still use it or not, but uh, do you? Well, wow, okay. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, the reason, like uh, David said, we bring new people in, uh, so you get kind of a feeling for the city council, feeling for the building. Um, so you could definitely not could be a stranger. Um, I, I, I guess uh, my, the only question I have is um, uh, um, actually I'll save that for another time. I'll, I'd like to talk to you, you know, one on one sometime, um, just regarding some ideas I have. But the last thing, comment, commentary, or, uh, is maybe building up the uh, alumni relations. You know, I'm sitting here in, in Holyoke, uh, former. And I don't think I've ever been contacted once by the alumni board. Um, and I know that's something that we're beefing up at Westwood State and making sure that uh, all the uh, students and alumni uh, have equity in it. And I know that's what remote counselor uh, or President Torcia is doing is he's trying to get all the, the freshman class now um, equity by getting them, whether they donate a dollar, five dollars, but they have a hand in their future. And so uh, he has said that studies have shown that once they're invested as freshmen, 
you know, 20 years down the road, they'll still be invested as alumni. Um, so those are just my thoughts. Thank you for coming in tonight. We appreciate it. I thank appreciate you. it. Council yeah, talk. thank you for your comment. Um, may I no, sure, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, I think the alumni is a, a really good comment and something that I definitely would look at through the strategic planning process. I do think it's different for community colleges versus four-year. Sure. Um, if you have an individual that graduated from HCC and Westfield State, when it comes to donating, they'll tend to think about their highest degree yeah. college. And so the, a lot of people don't stop and think about, you know, how do I donate to the place that I got started or, you know, my community college that brought me from this journey to the next. Um, so I think we've got some different challenges to engage them, but uh, none, nonetheless, your comment about engaging them is uh, well taken. All right, I appreciate that. Thank you once again for coming in. Thank you. Councilor Tallman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Christine. Great meeting you again. I, I met you briefly a few months ago when you first got on. Just had a brief chat with you, but it's good to you to come down here and talk to us and explain your vision for the for the college. Um, just a, a couple points I have. Um, can you explain a little bit? And maybe people don't understand. I know a lot of us do. Is um, the students that are in high school that are transitioning into college that actually while they're in high school, can you give a brief talk on that about what they actually do up at the college? Sure. <clears throat> so. We, well, we've got a couple of different types of students that would overlap that population of uh, high school and, and college. But um, so you have the student who is doing well in high school and would be interested in um, taking some additional credits at the college level and have a chance to um, start earning college credit while in high school. Um, and, and depending on the individual student perhaps could even get an associate's degree by the time they graduate high school. Um, so there, there's a growing interest in looking at dual enrollment. And uh, that's something that I've talked to Dr. Zreich about as well. And um, as, as he works on the uh, redesign plan for the Holy Public Schools. And uh, I, I think the other, the other area that is of interest to me to address with the high schools is being able to look at how we can um, better prepare students coming out of high school for college ready work and so we do have a pretty high percentage of students um, upwards of 50 percent that are testing into developmental math and English and therefore they're coming to us um, before they have met the competencies to be able to start college level coursework so um, there's a great interest in trying to reduce uh, the number of students that are leaving high school um, and not prepared for college so both of those populations of students would be the area of overlap that I think would be the greatest priority for both Dr. Zreich and myself. Okay, Thank you and I um, also am an alumni of HCC class of 87 and I actually took about seven years ago there. I went through the GI Bill after the service and uh, went part-time, and I got a great education at HCC, and I'm sure you still have many students that, in the military that are utilizing that uh, program uh, right now. Um, and I have been contacted over the years to donate, and I get the newsletter, and I find out that you uh, like selfies, right? <laughs> <laughs> I delivered quite a few of those uh, in the last couple of weeks and uh, um, getting out and getting involved. Um, one last uh, item I want to talk about, um, your physical plan up there at the college. Is there some plans, something you've heard about um, parking lots and solar energy, or could you just briefly give us any update on that, what you have? Solar energy. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I might need to ask Jeff to weigh in. <laughs> This might be something down the road. I thought you were going to ask maybe about the the college center. <laughs> <laughs> There's there is a, a a pilot related to solar, but we're, we really haven't uh, moved that far. There are some other um, developments on campus that Dr. Royal could speak to. Uh, the uh, um, um, what was the other? You said solar and something else. The parking. The parking. Oh, and, parking Parking lots, yeah, because how they uh, yeah. pot potentially stuck in a parking lot, but that's a Down that's an idea. So just something, okay, yeah. okay. 
But uh, thanks for coming. In your, your three points, I think we can use that in everyday life, success, affordability, and equity. I think that's that's a key. And, and as a community college that, you know, and drawing from people with this in this area, you know, to be affordable and to, to get their degree and to move on with that, I, I think that is, uh, you know, that's vital today because a, a lot of uh, people today, college education is one of the toughest barriers to overcome, um, and some families just can't get past that. And I know you probably have programs, too, to help students you know, um, get grants and get help. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that the alumni does push for is for, for student, you know, enrollment to try to put money towards a fund so that students that don't have the affordability can be helped through the alumni, through the education that they got at HCC. So thanks for coming down. Thank you. And I, I think when we talk about the affordability issue, it's I think some of it is just education, really getting people to really think about what the cost of going to a very expensive college is for the first two years of a bachelor's degree. And um, I want to see all of our students start at a community college and finish at a four-year public school. Um, but, you know, I think that there are a lot of perceptions about community colleges that have changed over the last couple of decades. We were fortunate enough to receive the Difference Maker Award uh, along with the other community colleges in Western Massachusetts just last week. And part of that is really um, having people start to understand all that a community college does and how that's different from a four-year mission and what we can do to get the students to realize that they can finish anywhere. They can finish at Westfield State. They can finish at Harvard. But if you spend your first two years at a community college, um, you will be much better off financially when you do graduate. Thank you. Carl Sullivan? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Christine. I've got three questions for you. Um, uh, is there any thought at all of going to a, any kind of a residency or dormitory programs? I've seen over the last couple of years, uh, well over a dozen kids from Hoyoke get attracted to programs as far away as Riverside, California, and as far out in the boondocks as South Central Iowa, uh, Creston, I think it was Creston, Iowa, which was a two-hour drive through cornfields. Um, and uh, they were actually able to attract people into their community and had resident programs and uh, Tremendous things that you know. Also, be, you know, besides what it did for the community, they paid more, which offset the cost locally, and um, you know, also a added to the economy in the community. Is there anything, any thoughts about anything like that going on? Well, we haven't had any discussion specifically about it. It's certainly a question that might come up in a strategic planning process when when we do some visioning. I think that there are a lot of things to think about with that, particularly also. Um, do we want to expand um, our mission and focus <coughs> to include housing, or is there a way to partner with the four-year schools locally to satisfy any housing needs that might exist? So um, it, one of my former um, community colleges that I was at, uh, we had partnered, quite frankly, with the four-year public school in that area to be able to secure housing for various special needs that some of our uh, special populations of students would have. So I, I'd certainly want to make sure that we look at the that change if we decided to, to explore that and if there was great interest to do that. Um, I personally, uh, right now, am of the mindset that I want us to focus on being better at our core mission. And um, and right now that doesn't include housing. But again, part of the reason why I'm coming in with an openness to engage with the community is because I am new to this area. So I don't presume to know all the history uh, that comes with it, how Holyoke has changed over the decades, and um, what other types of things that might come up through community participation that could um, spark ideas like this. OK, thank you. Um, the second one. Uh you know, kind of a where go with HCC. I've watched over the last couple of years Bay Path, uh, Pine Manor, LaSalle, all the two year colleges have eventually expanded into four. Is that something in the long term goals or where, where are we heading with that? Uh, um, 
I guess I'd, I'd answer that in the same way with your previous question. You know, that would be a change of mission. And um, I'm not necessarily sure that uh, that is that there has been an impetus that I have seen. Granted, I've been here for all 90 days, so. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that you know I would be open to understanding uh, if there was some interest in having dialogue about that. What's driving it? Um, because I believe that this community needs a strong community college, and I think HCC fills that niche. And um, we have to focus on putting our limited resources to better use with the priorities and issues and challenges that we have currently. And um, instead of necessarily just creating another four-year college because some other colleges have gone that path. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, the, the last one you, you mentioned, you know, in the community outreach and stuff like that. Uh, you've got some tremendous uh, athletic and sports facilities up there. Um, uh, we've been struggling with different programs and different aging venues throughout the city. Is that something where maybe as a way to attract and familiarize younger kids in AAU programs and stuff where the facilities could be opened up uh, uh, to these programs, uh, you know, on a limited basis or, you know, somewhat as an outreach uh, yeah, I think it uh, it's certainly something that we could look into if there were times when our athletic fields are not being utilized and that there's a, a community need for that. Uh, I definitely would be open to, to looking at that. Also trying to understand if, if there's been any history with um, using it for recreational facilities or, or other things and, and what other implications would come along with, with opening it up. Um, to that. The school I just came from, um, we had uh, even the neighboring college that did not have uh, athletics program using fields between each other. So I think that there's some shared services types of arrangements that um, exist already at, in other schools that we could look at. Um, but again, I would say, you know, if, if that ends up being a priority. You know, I think we have to really look at um, what we can do to really address um, some of the core challenges of getting students um, to college and through college successfully as the biggest um, contribution that we can make to this region from an economic development perspective. I think that people necessarily, they, they always think of HCC and they think about the academics, right? What, you know, we're, that we're, we're bringing students in, we're graduating them. But I, I think I also bring a lens of looking at from a workforce perspective and an economic development perspective about what HCC, what is HCC's role in this local community. Um, my, I don't exactly know uh, what the economic impact is, but my guess is that we would rank as one of the highest employers in this area. And so given that, um, you know, what do we do to really focus on the major drivers that will help the economy thrive? Uh, when we look at overall statistics of uh, changes in population in this area, you know, do we have a declining population of citizens? And if so, what are we able to do to change that through job creation and economic development? So um, I think that's I, I'm one of the things that I'm hoping that we get out of this plan is um, there's never just one or five things that we can focus on being the size that we are. But I want to make sure that we leave this strategic planning process with focus that we have a uh, focus on what we can do to direct our resources to the places that are going to have the greatest impact both for the college and the community. Okay, thank you. Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Dr. Royal. Um, it's good to see you again. Congratulations not only on, on the appointment but on being the first woman president of the college. I think that's wonderful and it, wasn't, it was a little bit overdue. 
Um, we've Seventy been a few years. Times. <laughs> Come again? <clears throat> Seventy years. <laughs> we well, uh, why not? But we had a few good presidents before you. I yeah. might, I might just add that. Let me just. just you get no argument there. Just for the record. <laughs> I know. And, All right. And, and just, All right, just for the record, you. I was on the search committee for for David Bartley when I was a student at Loyal Community College. But I'd like to go back to something you said about the difference makers. And I know you you spoke at the difference makers because I was there as one of the many representing the many friends at Holyoke Mary Ground who were also honored. For the first time, Business West looked at all five community colleges in the area, which each have their own niche and each have their own story to tell. Um, I just like to tell you, and I think I did quietly, but publicly, you were the best speaker of those five colleges. And your message was clear to the point and understood by everybody in that room, which was the business community. I, I say that because uh, my good friend, our, our former uh, economic development director, Mr. Hayden, is behind you, and we know the importance of the Kittred Center and what it means to this to this community. And, and I, I for one, you know, believe as a, and I, I have to back this up a little bit because, you know, Councilor Tomlin was two years behind me in high school, and I graduated in '73. He graduated in '75. I graduated from community college in 75, went on to Westfield State. He graduated from community college in 87, you said? Well. I guess so. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Peter. <laughs> but all jokes aside, that two-year mission, the mission that you gave us this evening, is the mission that is the successful component to not only the city of Hoyoke, but to this region. And, and it works over and over again and has been working for, for 70 years since Dr. Frost started community college in the middle of Hoyoke High School. And it's just, it's an incredible story. When, when, when my class was the, not the first class to graduate on the campus, but the first class, the second class to move up there, and the parking lots were literally dirt when we got there. And Mr. Bartley, and, and, and I say so not just because his son is sitting next to me, was the choice of some of us as students because we knew that campus had to grow. And Dave Bartley did the trick. Those buildings, they grew and they, and they went on and, and the, the facility is second to none in the area. Now, like, like, like uh, President Messenger and yourself, it's academics, the curriculum, the, the message, the community. The, that is the powerful story that we need to hear and you say it beautiful. I don't, I don't have any questions. I just say well done and, and welcome to Hoyoke and keep up the good work. Thank you. appreciate that. And um, could you counsel me on how to differentiate between the two Bartleys? Yeah, but we'll I never know. know <laughs> at this point, I never know who they're talking about. You know, unless there is a generational thing I can pick up in age. I, I mean, I really, um, I, if you have any suggestions, I'm the, open. The one who's closer to me in age votes for me. The other one doesn't. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll figure that one out later. I'm not sure where that's going, but I'm, I'm not going there. Uh, Councilor Roman. Thank you so much, Madam President, for being here. I appreciate it. And I, too, similar to my colleagues, you've answered a lot of the questions. I just want to say congratulations. Welcome to the City of Holyoke. And specifically, again, as one of the lower ward reps, just thank you for your investment with the new MGM Culinary Center that's opening up, or even the Adult Learning Center. I have to laud and applaud Sarah Schmidt and that selection there uh, for the Adult Learning Center. That is an amazing contribution. The fact that it's right next to a bus route, accessible to all. And I'd actually love to encourage that continued continued uh, bringing the campus back downtown. I love that model, uh, including your you know adult extended learning program. I'd love to see some of those courses offered down here. Uh, I know I just went for my serve safe up there, actually. Um, I passed, thank God. Um, so I'm now serve safe uh, certified uh, for my job at Lorraine Soup Kitchen. But it's thanks to the many programs. Um, and I, as you stated, as an economic development driver and engine, I just really have to Thank you and Holyoke Community College for really bringing the campus back downtown. I think that's a great model towards economic development. Um, when that culinary center opens, it's going to be individuals not only frequenting local shops, but also spurring entrepreneurship, tons of spaces on Main Street that are going to be developed for entrepreneurs around the food service industry. So I'm really excited to see where you take it. Um, and I look forward to seeing, too, a 
uh, amazing connection that HTC already has with the Latino community. I just really have to say that it's one of the places where I'm out there. I know a lot of Latino young kids um, and individuals who are like, I want to go to HTC. I was just with an uh, eighth grade class at Morgan, uh, and a lot of them are actually saying that they want to go to HTC. So they're going to stay here and want to go to HTC and then continue on. So I think that's a notable fact and really welcome to Holyoke. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I know one of the things that I've heard a lot from the community in my first 90 days is um, about the story of HCC moving up the hill. Um, so uh, I, I recognize that that's a, a sensitive point here, and um, I hope that the Cupid building is the start of people really feeling like HCC is not just devoted to parts of the community, but the whole community. Okay. Counselor? Thank you. Um, thanks for coming, Christina. And um, I'm glad my colleagues all behaved. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, just for the record, I was born, I guess, the year that Joe McGivern went to Westfield State. So we'll, uh, we'll keep that in perspective. <laughs> um, I just wanted to comment on, on a couple of the, the things that came up, um, as everyone here knows, and many of the folks at home. Um, my full-time job is at Holyoke Community College and uh, coming up on 11 years there and uh, very proud to be a part of that uh, institution. So, you know, one of the things that I think has been um, really, you know, important and uh, crucial in your first 90 days is, is your philosophy around we really need to kind of be the best we can be right now instead of kind of, you know, figuring out all these other routes that we can kind of get into. Um, and I, as a staff person there, appreciate that because I think it helps us focus on how we can best serve the community instead of just kind of coming up with all these random ideas, which sometimes are great, but sometimes can be short-lived. Sometimes, you know, there's financial implications that do not allow it to be sustainable. So I think that the the, the motto of, you know, being the best we can be is, is really important, so I, I appreciate that. Um, we are, as far as I know, we're still, uh, the, of the 15 community colleges in Massachusetts, we are the first one in terms of transfer. Um, so we're very proud of that. And um, we just started a, a new, just so that all you know, because it's also important for your constituents, um, we started a, a new agreement. It's called the Commonwealth Commitment, which um, is, is phenomenal in terms of money savings and, and all these other pieces where literally a student can finish up at HCC and go to, for example, UMass Westfield. And over the four years that they're in between both institutions, um, they get 10% rebate of the tuition uh, if they achieve a 3.0 GPA and they um, finish within the two years and then two more years. So um, it's an average savings of about $6,000. And it's something that we're very, very proud of. And it's a huge way to also kind of invite people to be a part of HCC because it's not just what you can accomplish there but what comes out later on. Um, so that's that's something that we're really excited about. The other thing and I wanted to comment on is, you know, here as a city council, we have had many conversations with Dr. Strike, and, um, and we understand, obviously, the importance of the relationship between the Holyoke Public Schools and HCC. And so the fact that um, Holyoke Public School students can now be part of dual enrollment, which was not always the case, is huge. Because for a long time, here we were the community college in Holyoke, and the schools in Holyoke could not participate in dual enrollment. So we had students coming from um, Hampshire County and all these other high schools, but we couldn't be a part of that. And uh, we now are. And that's coming out to be a, a great initiative as well. The other piece that we're working on with the um, high schools in Holyoke and, and different kind of hats that we're wearing is trying to focus on when the students come from the Holyoke High Schools, from Dean Tech and from Holyoke High. Um, we connect with them at the school through Avanzada College, which is one of our programs um, that's part of the admissions department. And we identify these students before they even you know, get to us. So by the time they come to us, they have the most supportive environment they can have. Um, so that's something that, that we continue to grow on. and. You know, our Dean of Enrollment Management as part of the turnaround plan team with Drs. Reichs. I mean, there's definitely a very close connection there. Um, you know, we have a new advertising slogan that says, start for something, stop for nothing. And I think it really describes um, what we want to see our students um, be involved with. So I just wanted to comment on a couple of those things. Um, the dorms idea, it's interesting that um, Councillor Sullivan was talking about that. We have a number of international students on campus. And guess what? They're 
coming from very far away. They don't have where to live. Um, so we've actually uh, been in some collaborations with actually Westfield State where um, they have been assisting with the housing, but it's not ideal, really, because they're coming from Westfield, coming to HCC. Um, so there definitely have been conversations around the whole dorm situation, but I do think it falls into that category of, you know, let's kind of focus on what we do best, and dorms is not kind of on that list right now, as far as I know. Um, and last but not least, I wanted to mention that, uh, I think it was also um, Councillor Sullivan had asked about you know if if the the mission of HSC were to change and I remember when I when I started at the college almost 11 years ago there was a conversation about this one college and there was an idea of putting HCC and STCC together and um, that didn't happen but they are definitely um, one of our main collaborators so I think someone said it before that you know we each kind of focus on what we're most strong at and um, most definitely the reputation I think that we have with HCC is is that connection with the community and I, I appreciate that your personality lends itself to continue uh, to grow that relationship with us here as as a body but also with the city in general so thank you thank you uh, okay so uh, Madam President thank you for coming here it's a real honor to meet you and you know best wishes for everything we hope you come back thank you uh, when, when you have more a little a uh, little more seasoning um, I know you did here 90 days that's a lot uh, to ask come and ask these big questions but it sounds like you got really some great plans looking forward you got a great team behind you i know you got a whole community that wants to support you and we'll do whatever we can to help at hcc okay great well and i welcome the opportunity to um to come and engage with you as a committee or the full council um i definitely hope that we can uh continue to build off of a good community relationship and and see how we can raise the whole community up and the college up together well we'll do it again all right. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Chair, make a motion that the order has been complied with. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well done. Um, the. Uh, Where's the agenda? There we go. Okay. Uh, if I could get a motion to take up number six, that would be great. Yeah, motion to take up item number six. Second. Uh, all in favor, uh, take up item number six uh, on the motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, item number six, uh, resolution declaring Holyoke's commitment to being a safe and accepting community. Um, and we have Councillor Valentin here, and we have her resolution before us, and Councillor Valentin. Thank you. Um, I had filed this order uh, back, I think we discussed it December 7th, if I remember correctly. And uh, it seemed that for the most part, there may have been an interest of um, several folks in the body to adopt it that evening, but apparently there were some additional questions, so it got referred here. So I defer to all of you. Um, I know there are two folks here in the audience right now that um, are here to speak in support of the order. So if you have any specific questions or would like to suspend the rules for public comment, if they're interested in sharing their thoughts, um, they are in the audience. Thank you. Motion to suspend the rules to accept public comment. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? All right. Okay. So um, if there are members of the public who want to address this, um, we're happy to happy to hear from you. Uh, you've been waiting patiently, and we always appreciate that. Um, j just want you to know, we you know we're, we're going to put a two two and a half minute cap on it. So if you can say it kind of succinctly and um, to the point, that would be great. Councilor Valentin, if you want to help them with a the microphone, especially uh, Lynn, that that might be helpful. Okay. <laughs> Well, again, if you're going to address us, then you're going to use a microphone. So Lynn, one, uh, Lynn Horan, 100 Southampton Road. Um, speaking largely to uh, the resolution presented, I be, believe, back in um, December. Um, 
that Josie Valentin put forth. Um, for safe communities, um, I uh, spoke before, and I know we have more of the process to go through, and it's been a long night, which I actually uh, must be crazy enough to say I enjoy it to a point because the speakers we had tonight, sometimes these are the meetings I learn more about you all and the process you go through, too. Um, but mostly just to say in support that I hope that um, you will consider it for the reasons stated by citizens before and um, hopefully I'll have an opportunity with a full city council meeting to make commentary then and I'll leave it at that so you can go home a little earlier okay thanks Lynn okay it's also, it's also, okay all right all right well thank you for addressing these uh, counselors do you want to make any remarks comments questions concerns about this do any counselors want to say anything no? About the resolution? Yeah, so we. Oh! <laughs> um, about the resolution. No? Well, uh, Council, yeah. Council Sullivan. Yeah, as far as the resolution goes, um, you know, I, I think it's a, a, a good resolution. I think it's nice and, and well thought out. My own personal opinion is uh, that there's. There's no need for declaring Hoyoke's commitment. Hoyoke lives up to its commitment, I think, every day to being a safe and accepting community. I, th I, I think that we've spent, in my short tenure here on the City Council, way too much time on various resolutions um, that are outside of our venue and uh, eating up a lot of the time um, that we need to spend on this is it, other priorities. This is county, so right? it's it's not the wording or the uh, meaning of the resolution. It, it's just the fact and the usefulness and how much time they are consuming right now. Various resolutions, not this one in particular, that we need to get more focused on the business at hand uh, that's really within the scope and the problems that do address the city. Well, thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Councilor Tallman, did you want to speak? You had your hand up or no? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll say a few words. I, I just, um, I think anything that anybody brings up before the council is important, you know, and I think resolutions is one of them, and I don't believe that uh, it's any time wasted at all. Um, you know, I mean, Hoyoke has been a welcoming community, but there are instances sometimes where people may not totally feel welcome, and um, it's, it's shown at different times, um, not just to the council, but to the general public that, uh, you know, um, things happen in our community that, uh, you know, whether, you know, people don't feel accepted or um, don't feel a part of community and uh, um, putting a resolution together, I think, is, is important to the fact that lets people know that we are here for a reason and uh, that we're all one. We're all here in a community to, to join together and to, to make this a better community. So, um, uh, I have uh, no problem with this. I, I know we brought this up in December, and there was a couple, a couple issues uh, with it uh, by some of our colleagues. Um, but um, it's something that uh, I know that the way I was brought up to, to welcome all people of um, all different uh, races and creeds and genders uh, in the community to, to work together for the betterment of the community. So um, I have no problem with this. I, I think it's. Uh, it's something that uh, we should definitely uh, pass and and uh, accept uh, and to let people know that we are a welcoming community. Okay. Uh, th that being said, um, of course, yeah, Councilor Allen. I, I don't know if Councilor McGivern was going to say something, so I was just waiting because um, it looked like he was signaling, but I wasn't sure. No, I'm trying to help Councillor Tomlin with the with mic because <laughs> this is our mic without the. Uh, He's missing the little so piece here. It, yeah, it catches. Yeah. I know, and his <clears throat> voice and his voice carries. Yeah. Um, so just you know, in in response to um, Councillor Sullivan's remarks, you know, as I said on December seventh, um, this this resolution was was filed because we had uh, a significant change in the narrative and the rhetoric uh, in our communities at large, um, not excluding Holyoke, after the November election. And um, 
the person who actually uh, sent us all an email um, asking us, one of the many people that, that reached out to me, but the person who actually emailed all of us saying, you know, what are you going to do about this? Are you going to stand up and say Holyoke is, you know, is, is the intent is to be a welcoming community is actually in the audience tonight. And uh, I had already received uh, numerous calls and emails from my constituents saying, you know, we, we really need to reassure people that are concerned about the um, tone in the community. And um, and I, I, I do feel that that's something that we are all responsible for, as Councillor Tallman was talking about. You know, we've, we've had conversations in these chambers about things that are important to some of us and not so much to others. Um, and, you know, we, we still, for the most part, have the conversation um, out of courtesy or, or out of camaraderie. And then there's other pieces that you know we've spent a lot of time on that have been very significant for someone and for some of us, we're just kind of like, why are we even talking about this, right? So, um, to me, you know, when when I compare resolutions and I, you know, we we talk about the Oscar Lopez resolution that we unanimously voted on, um, and you know that was our part of, you know, in, kind of being part of that conversation. And the conversations we had here about, you know, what to call the, the tree out there, if it was a Christmas tree or a holiday tree. I mean, the people who were contacting me about uh, the tone in the community use that as a, a, an example um, of, you know, you, you guys all spent time talking about the tree out there. And if it was a Christmas tree or a holiday tree, you might as well uh, give the time of the day to something like this. So, um, so I think it's, it's an important message to give to our constituents and, uh, I happen to live in, in a ward that is very uh, vocal, very progressive for the most part, and um, this is, you know, something that, that was important to some of my constituents and uh, to also many folks citywide. So, so I appreciate uh, people taking the time to, to throw their comments out there. Um, but on December 7th, there were some comments that, you know, Mike Plaisance made us the favor of, of documenting them in an article on Mass Live, and I would invite you all to read that again and, and read the comments that came out of these chambers um, when we were talking about the language of this, of this uh, resolution. And uh, it is troubling. It's troubling to me because there's 15 of us here that were elected by the people to represent the 40,000 that live in the city. And um, I think that it's important that we pay attention to, to the message that we're sending along. Thank you. Right. Okay. So I thank you for that. Um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm of the opinion that that we had, uh, and I know I know we, we get the dates thrown out all the time here. Um, so so the public knows that that yeah, this committee generally meets once a month, um, and we generally have a pretty f full agenda too. Um, so um, being the chair, I, I took this up as expeditiously as 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 I could and as what I, I felt it was warranted. Um, so I, I, I understand that uh, sometimes we don't turn things around as quickly as uh, the public wants or counselors want, but um, but that's you know that's life. There, there there is a there is a pipeline, and uh, um, you know it's up. It's really up to the chairs to uh, to determine that. So that being said, um, we also had a uh, kind of a, sp a dispirited uh, de uh, debate um, last year about this. I, it was my opinion then, and it's my opinion now that um, that if, if we're going to pass something similar sim, similar to what we had, Councillor Valentin had us pass or propose, and we passed um, unanimously back in May of 16, entitled "Resolution Affirming the City of Holyoke's Commitment to Civil Rights and Ensuring Equity for All People in Holyoke and Beyond." Um, so we had that resolution passed um, May 3rd. Signed by the mayor May 9th, uh, and that passed unanimously. Again, that was a resolution affirming the city of Holyoke's commitment to civil rights and ensuring equity for all people in Holyoke and beyond. Now we have a resolution declaring Holyoke's commitment to being a safe and accepting community, uh, written in the light of an election that uh, you know it, that's the way the election fell. Um, I I I would be of the opinion that this would be a wonderful. Uh, resolution, if it were less wordy, less pedantic, um, 
and more to the point. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different resolutions on this. Um, I mean, the whereases are one, two, three, four, whereas, five whereases. Um, I'm referencing, referencing Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, mis misogynism, uh, homophobia, transphobia, uh, anti uh, referencing a human rights declaration from, declared by the United Nations in 1948, uh, referencing again this order uh, that we, we passed in May. Uh, um, I, I just think it, to me, it's, 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 it's so expansive, I think we, it, loses, it loses the focus necessary to get to the point that Holyoke's a nice place. It's a nice place to live. It's generally populated by pretty good people that want to help out uh, their, their fellow citizen. Um, but, but I think when we, when we say words and we have a resolution um, that goes to... Um, let me just find the exact wording that, um, and to protect those whose security and well-being may be threatened in the current political and social climate. Well, in the current political and social climate, this is a resolution that we want to pass for all time. The, the, the political and social climate is going to be, is dynamic. And so you, you want to have that, I, I don't want to have that language in there. I, I don't, and at first, first I don't feel like pulling out protecting, you know, racism, Islamophobia, and, you know, how about this sentence says, Holyoke City Council is adamantly committed to protecting this community's residents, period. Um, uh, Holyoke City Council believes in the rights of all people. Uh, to I think that's great. Okay, so two whereas's are great. Um, I think, I think that's, that's enough. I think one resolution that the City Council in Holyoke redoubles its commitment to the values of freedom, justice, and, and equality that bind us as a community. I think that says it all right there. It, 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 you know, to me, I, 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 unless this is edited down um, significantly, I, I, it just loses its... So that, that's my opinion. Uh, I, I, I won't support this as written. I will support the sentiment. Of course I'll support the sentiment. 100% I support it. But the, the wording itself, it goes well, well beyond anything that I, I want to sign my name onto or, or that I'll vote for on behalf of the, uh, um, you know, the 1,500 residents that, 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 I, that I happen to represent. So, um, so with, with that, uh, with, I mean, that, that's, all, that's all I, you know, that's all I can, well, actually, 1,500, I'm going to 5,000 uh, residents. So um, with that, uh, I mean, I'll... Council Sullivan? Uh, just so I'm clear on where I stand, I, I, I do agree with the intent, but I, I just feel it's totally redundant of the um, resolution we've already passed. And to go through the process again, I, I just don't feel it makes sense given all the other things we've got in front of us. Councilor Valentin, you want to comment? Of course. Um, so. The difference between this and what we voted on, and I believe you said it was May of last year, um, as you all know, that uh, resolution was um, stemmed from the conversation about the very um, bigoted legislation that we were seeing that was happening in the state of North Carolina. And uh, again, uh, many of us on the council were approached by constituents saying um, we're seeing a influx of local legislation uh, coming up, not necessarily in Holyoke, but just in general, that um, is, is problematic. And so that resolution is, the one from May, is particularly around um, a, a pretty specific category and, and a lot of it kind of focused around gender identity, sexual orientation. This that we have in front of us tonight is much more encompassing. Um, we're talking about folks that feel uh, discriminated against based on, as Councillor Tallman talked about, uh, creed, race. So this is, this is a much bigger picture um, conversation than, than the one from, from last year. And so 
you know, I think the the I, I find it problematic, and I'm being completely honest as I always am because I never sugarcoat anything. Um, I find it very I, I find it problematic that we are looking to um, dilute something, which to a lot of people is important. And I find it problematic that when we all say here, and, and we're all very clear about the difference between a resolution and an ordinance, something that has uh, you know, no legal piece to it, there's no enforcement, it's really symbolic in nature, it's really um, to impact the tone that we have as city leaders, the way that our constituents, regardless of what ward we're in, feel uh, they are being addressed or they are being ignored. Um, I think those are important conversations to take into place and into account. And so the, the process of, of diluting this is, um, is problematic to me. And I, I respect your opinions. I understand that, um, Councillor Bartley, you know, obviously you're, you're one of 15 votes. Um, but I, 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 I feel that it's, I'm not sure, how productive um, it would be to really try to dilute this resolution when that is the absolute opposite of, of what we're trying to accomplish. Again, you're one of 15 votes, and I can't um, you know, tell you how to feel about this, but um, you know, I, as soon as I filed this legislation, I had a number of our colleagues uh, sign on to it. And honestly, I, I felt that we did have the eight votes that night, um, but because some of our colleagues were extremely vocal about uh, how they felt that certain groups were being excluded, which completely defied the purpose of protected class, and it seems like maybe some folks in the city council need to take a look at what protected class means. Um, I think that because of that conversation, it just kind of got sent to committee and, and it's where we are today. But um, I, I do have to say on the record that if the purpose of the committee tonight and the plan is to dilute the resolution, um, I'm against that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, much your pleasure. You wanna make a motion? Make a motion to recommend the city council to adopt the resolution as written. I'll second that. Um, okay, motion uh, to adopt it as written. Um, uh, we'll do a roll call on on. Uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a motion to table it. Second. Um, Uh, that's not debatable. On the motion to table, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Uh, original motion, Mr. Chairman? Uh, original motion is to adopt uh, on the motion. Um, we'll do a roll call. Councilor Tallman? Yes. Councilor Gamerin? Yes. Councilor Bartley? No. Councilor no. Sullivan? No. Okay. So we voted uh, two to two to. Um, um, so that, that breaks the tie, but uh, there's no there's a tie there, so we will just. Uh, We'll forward it to the full city council um, with no recommendation from this body. So we'll uh, we'll go through the same we'll go through the same thing as before. Okay, um, uh, for next meeting that's a, that's the next item on the agenda. Um, can you can we do May first? May first is good for me. Is that possible? <coughs> it's fine. Yes, May first. Yep. Okay, I just need a motion. One more motion, and I'll do it. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.